Well, every Sunday we set aside a few minutes of the teaching to devote to Bible prophecy. We believe that we are living in what the Bible calls are the last days, that we are living in the last moments of world history as we know it, that nothing has yet to happen prophetically before the rapture of the church, which has to happen before the seven-year tribulation, which means that the Lord's return is imminent and can happen at any time, even at an hour that we do not expect. For today's update, I want to look at a prophecy that's found in the Apostle Paul's first and second epistles to a young pastor by the name of Timothy. The first one is in the first epistle, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I'll ask you if you don't mind to turn there. I'll give you a moment. The Apostle Paul, writing by the Holy Spirit, says to Timothy regarding the last days, now the Spirit expressly says <coughs> that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In his second uh, epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3, he writes, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the, watch these two words, falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now, I want to draw your attention to these two words, falling away. Some of your translations might render it differently, but it has the thought of a departing away from the faith, and some have taken it a step further in the original language of the Greek New Testament and looking at the original word apostia or where we get our English word apostasy where there's a falling away or a departure. Some have thought that it could also mean not only a departing from the faith but the rapture of the church which is a departing of those who are of the faith. It could be both. I think we do err in our understanding of the scriptures when we limit the word of God to an either or interpretation. God's word is a double-edged sword. And you have to understand in the English language, we have a limited uh, lexicon, whereas in the Greek language, it's a much uh, vaster language. And there are many more words in the Greek language than there are, <coughs> pardon me, in the uh, uh, English language. So it is very possible that when the Apostle Paul writes these epistles to these churches that what he's saying is that a mark or a characteristic of the last days will be a falling away from the faith, a departure from the faith. They will walk away from faith in Jesus Christ. Well, back in August of 2008, there was an interesting article that was posted, <coughs> pardon me, on America.gov's website titled, Many Americans Change Religious Beliefs. In it, they quoted a recent survey and published the following. According to the U.S. Religious Landscape Survey by the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life, they discovered that 28% of U.S. adults have left the faith in which they were raised in favor of another religion or no religion at all. Seven months later, in the April 2009 issue of Newsweek magazine, they ran a cover story that was titled, The Decline and Fall of Christian America. Note that the cover story title is formed in the shape of a cross. The cover story was not the only article that was related to the decline of Christianity in America. There was even another article in this same Newsweek issue which was given the title, The End of Christian America. So the cover is the decline of Christian America. And then there's another story uh, within the pages of this Newsweek issue that is titled, The End of Christian America. The article quotes statistics from a Newsweek survey which says that 
the percentage of self-identified Christians has fallen 10 percentage points since 1990 from 86 to 76 percent. The article goes on to quote another statistic from the survey, and it says that the number of people willing to describe themselves <coughs> pardon me, as atheist or agnostic has increased about fourfold from 1990 to 2009, from 1 million to about 3.6 million. In their book, Already Gone, Authors Ken Ham of the AnswersInGenesis.org website, which, by the way, I would highly recommend, and I think you'll understand why I say that at the conclusion of our prophecy update today. But Ken Ham and Britt Beamer confirm this report and even take it a step further by identifying the reason from a biblical standpoint. According to their extensive research, children and youth that are raised in Christian homes and schools are departing from the faith. And the reason is that they've never been taught why they believe what they believe, especially related to the foundational chapters in the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, chapters 1 through 11. Ken Ham wrote, by and large, instead of a stand on God's word as authoritative and teaching them answers to defend the Christian faith against the Genesis attack of this age, they are told to merely trust in Jesus. The point is, we do want them to trust Christ for salvation, but why should they believe the message of salvation that comes from a book they believe can't be trusted anymore? To them, the authority of God's word has been destroyed. The church is not dealing with the attacks, but continues preaching the spiritual, moral, and doctrinal things from God's word and that are founded in Genesis chapters 1 through 11. This is why the majority of young people in our churches today, even though they may still at this time be sitting in church, are already gone. In their minds, they have left. Over 60% will walk away from the church. America's research group was commissioned by Answers in Genesis to survey those 20-somethings who used to go to church as kids but no longer attend church regularly or have left totally. The results are revealing, shocking, convicting, and a wake-up call to the church. 1,000 individuals who used to attend church regularly as kids but no longer go to church or no longer go regularly were asked a series of questions formulated by Britt Beamer from America's research group. Of all the 20 to 29-year-old evangelicals who attended church regularly but no longer do so, 95% of them attended church regularly during their elementary and middle school years 55% attended church regularly during high school, and watch this, only 11% were still going to church during college. Note that it wasn't at college where most of them stopped attending church. The majority had left before they got to college. So it is certainly not at college where the majority have had their hearts and minds changed in regard to God's word. Nearly 90% attended the equivalent of a public school. And this fits with the general statistic in the culture. 90% of kids from church homes attend public schools. And I have to say, they've taken God out of the schools. And they teach evolution. And our kids, bless their hearts, are ill-equipped when they step foot into those public schools and are not given the answers to why they believe what they believe. So when that godless teacher says to them that the earth is millions and millions of years old, and when they watch Sesame Street and Elmo says that the earth... I don't know if Elmo does this, but I, I'm assuming he does. <laughs> My daughter doesn't watch that for that reason. <laughs> or those dinosaur cartoons where millions and millions of years ago, when the earth was millions and millions of years old, click. <laughs> They're not equipped. They don't know how to answer that. 
They have not been told why it is that they believe what it is that they believe. So they cannot tell them that scientifically the earth is young. The earth can't be that old. It's impossible. It's not even theoretically possible. And the scientific proof bears that out. And they've not been given the tool. I'm not angry, by the way. I'm just a little upset, that's all. <laughs> I'm going to turn this fan down. <sighs> Note that over 40% were having doubts and questioning the Bible by the end of middle school, and another 40% were having doubts and questioning the Bible by the end of high school. In other words, if you don't have them by the end of high school, you don't have nearly 90% of them. This tells us something about the importance of training children from when they are born. Most watch television, go to public schools, etc., and they are indoctrinated in the world's teaching that attacks the Bible. But the church doesn't deal with the attacks. Well, when I, at first service, was talking about the age of the earth and six literal days of creation, you know, God's word means what it says and says what it means. In the beginning, he created, and that means he created. That does not mean that he used evolution to create. And by the way, dear friend, if your kids go to a Catholic school or you yourself went to a Catholic school, you were taught theistic evolution. What's theistic evolution? Theistic evolution is God used evolution to, in the creation process. That is not what my Bible says. My Bible says, in the beginning, God created. He didn't use evolution to create. He created, and he created literal days. Well, this guy comes up to me at the first service and just starts railing into me. You can, shame on you for telling the people, you're wrong. There's no way the sun wasn't created till the third day, and, and there's no time, and, and the earth is millions of years old. And I try to answer his question until I realized that he wasn't looking for an answer. He was looking for an argument. And he just kept after me, and I just politely, at least at first, I politely just tried to excuse myself and just, you know, let, just, you know, respectfully, but he didn't let me go. And boy, he asked, well, <laughs> you really, you want to use this? So we went back and forth for a little bit on this thing. I think it was interesting that because this is the first time he's ever stepped foot in this church as a visitor to this church, and I believe God brought him to this church to hear this. Now hear this, please. Today, the Genesis attack concerns questions such as what happened to the dinosaurs? How could Noah fit the animals on the ark? By the way, parenthetically, let me say that Noah had dinosaurs on the ark. Did you know that there are dinosaurs mentioned in the Bible and they walked on the earth with man at the same time as man and now are extinct? So how could Noah fit the animals on the ark? How can you believe in six days of creation when we know the world is millions of years old? Humans wrote the Bible, so why is it different to any other book? Who made God? How do you know you can trust this book called the Bible? Don't you know the evidence for evolution is overwhelming? Hasn't science disproved the Bible? And many more questions like this. Now, instead of answering these questions, most people in the church have either accommodated with what the secular world teaches, thus undermining the authority of Scripture, or they ignore the questions and again just tell their young people to trust in Jesus. Those things don't matter, but they do matter. Because in these young people's minds, such questions, if not answered, mean that the Bible can't be trusted. And this would explain why the majority of these young people started to doubt and disbelieve God's word as trustworthy before college. Because see, in that public school, and dare I say, even in some Christian schools. Now I'm going to take it a step further. Catholic schools. Do you know that Catholicism teaches theistic evolution? What's theistic evolution? That God, 
the creator created the earth, the heaven, and the earth and the sea,